Nintendo is bricking Switch 2 consoles. Or are they? Reports of unusable consoles almost always involve violations of Nintendo's terms of service, such as using flashcards, backup tools, or unauthorized modifications. Nintendo's anti-piracy systems are strict. If a console is flagged, it may be banned from online services, or in rare cases, rendered fully inoperable. Most of these actions follow attempts to back up games or bypass protections, even when users claim legitimate use. While concerns persist around mistaken enforcement or what constitutes fair use, many of the so-called bricked units are actually just banned from being online and still function offline. However, some users on X and Twitter have said that if you do get banned, say you bought a cartridge on eBay, you put it in your Switch, and bam, you're banned. Uh, you, can, you can actually reach out to Nintendo's help uh, and they may or may not help you out. So let me know in the comments below, have you or any of your friends or family been banned? Nintendo and Universal have filed a copyright for a standalone Donkey Kong movie titled only as Untitled Donkey Kong Project Motion Picture. This definitely marks a potential for the expansion of Nintendo's cinematic universe following the global success of the Super Mario Bros. movie, which earned 1.361 billion with a B worldwide. This definitely shows that Nintendo is investing further in the film with Seth Rogen's Donkey Kong introduced in the Mario movie, likely returning as the central character. However, no release date or production details have been announced yet. I am definitely excited for this. Let me know in the comments below if you are too. Discord has been monetized, kind of. Discord has officially launched Orbs, a new virtual currency system now available globally after a successful beta. Users can earn Orbs by completing quests, mostly through interactive ads or by trying out select games. These Orbs can be redeemed in Discord shop for items like Nitro credits, profile badges, and exclusive cosmetics. Yay! The quest system in Discord is a primary way to earn accessible via the Discover tab or the quest bar. Even simple ad-based tasks can reward thousands of Orbs. Nitro credits also offer temporary access to premium features without a recurring subscription, though they don't include all of the standard perks. Additionally, orbs can't be used for everything on the platform, such as partner branded items, gifts, and recurring subscriptions are excluded. Items show an orbs price when the user's balance is sufficient. With 82% of surveyed users showing interest, Discord's new system signals a deeper push into gamified monetization. We have to monetize everything. Researchers have uncovered a new cybersecurity exploit called GPU Hammer that targets NVIDIA GPUs using a variant of the classic row hammer attack. Unlike the traditional row hammer, which manipulates DRAM, GPU Hammer flips bits in GPU memory by rapidly accessing adjacent memory locations, potentially leading to data corruption or privilege escalation. This is the first documented case of a Rowhammer style attack successfully targeting graphics memory. The exploit impacts CUDA enabled NVIDIA GPUs with researchers confirming successful attacks on recent consumer and data center models. While no real world attacks have been observed yet, the team warns that GPU Hammer could pose serious risks in cloud computing and shared GPU environments. NVIDIA has been notified, but a patch or mitigation hasn't been publicly announced. Razer is reviving its eGPU line with the launch of a Thunderbolt 5 based external GPU dock, sweet, making it the first eGPU release in over four years. The new device supports up to 240 watts of charging, features multiple USB-C and USB-A ports, and can deliver up to three 4K displays or a single 8k output over a single freaking cable let's go this dock is designed for desktop class gpus and aims to bring high-end gaming and creative performance to ultra portable laptops thunderbolt 5's significant bandwidth boost over previous generations makes this razor dock a strong contender for users who need portable power without sacrificing speed razor hasn't announced a price yet but availability is expected later 
this year. Perplexity has launched Comet, an AI-powered web browser designed to blend search and browsing into one seamless experience. Unlike traditional browsers, Comet uses AI to summarize pages, answer questions in real time, and guide users through information with minimal clicks. This is something I've been super excited for and I actually got an invite yesterday and it is sick. I've only scratched the surface and I can't wait to showcase all of the cool features on my channel. I'll be making an additional video for that coming soon. The browser builds itself on Perplexity's strength in conversational search, aiming to reduce friction by delivering instant answers and content previews without needing to jump between tabs. It also features context-aware navigation and an AI assistant that follows the user's journey to provide deeper insights. Comment is currently available in early access with a broader rollout expected later this year. Let me know in the comments below, have you gotten access to Comment yet? What are your initial thoughts on it? X is doubling down on edgy AI Grok companions, a new feature in development under its XAI initiative. One highlighted companion is called a Valentine bot, which has been teased as a flirty and raunchy AI companion capable of maintaining romantic or suggestive conversations with users. These bots definitely reflect X's vision of uncensored AI, distinguishing Grok from the more filtered competitors like OpenAI and Claude and so on and so forth. The concept is already raising ethical and safety concerns with critics warning about the risks of emotional manipulation, loneliness, exploitation, and lack of content safeguards. The feature has already actually released uh, and is available to users on iOS with no release date for Android quite yet, but I'm sure it will be coming out soon enough. Let me know in the comments below, have you tried any of these AI companions yet? What are your thoughts on them? Meta has announced that it's building a massive five gigawatt AI data center, one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects in the company's history. The facility is gonna be designed to power the most advanced AI training at a unprecedented scale, supporting Meta's push towards artificial general intelligence or AGI. The data center will use a mix of renewable energy sources and house next gen AI hardware to support large scale model development. Zuckerberg says the investment reflects Meta's belief that infrastructure is now central to AI leadership, not just software. No specific location or timeline has been disclosed yet. Dorsey's app Prithi is adding sun exposure tracking to its wellness toolkit. The new feature uses your phone's ambient light sensor and location data to estimate daily sunlight exposure, helping users understand how much natural light they're getting, which is a factor tied to mood, sleep, and overall health. The update expands Prithi's focus on privacy-first AI-powered health tracking. As with other features, data is processed locally with no cloud sync or third-party access. Users get personalized insights and prompts to adjust routines, based on light levels and daily patterns. The sun tracking feature is rolling out gradually as part of Prithi's limited release phase. Let me know in the comments below, is this something that you will use? Google is merging Chrome OS and Android engineering teams, a major move aimed at unifying the development of its two operating systems. While Chrome OS and Android will remain separate products, they'll now share underlying technologies more deeply, especially in areas like AI integration, security, and cross-platform experiences. The change is not about combining the platforms into a single OS, but about streamlining engineering efforts to deliver updates and features more consistently. The unified team will be led by Hiroshi Lakimir, signaling Google's commitment to a tighter alignment between laptops, tablets, and mobile devices. This consolidation comes as part of Google's broader AI push across all platforms. Speaking of Google and their phones and all, all their platforms, specs for the upcoming Pixel 10 Pro Fold have leaked, revealing a device focused on battery life and durability. The foldable will reportedly feature a 5,500 milliamp battery, a jump over previous models aimed at solving one of the foldable's biggest pain points, which I can confirm I have one right here. 
It's also expected to sport a 7.9 inch main display with improved crease resistance and a slimmer hinge design alongside a 6.4 inch outer display. The device will run on Google's next gen Tensor chip with AI optimized features and extended multitasking capabilities. The Pixel 10 Pro Fold is likely to debut in October of 2025, though Google hasn't confirmed the details yet, which are coming in August, so stay tuned. Japan has broken the world record for internet speed, achieving 402 terabits per second, so that's TBPS, using a standard size optical fiber. The breakthrough comes from Japan's National Institute of Information and Communications Technology, or NICT, which used advanced wavelength division and signal amplification technologies to hit the record speed over a 50 kilometer distance. To put this into perspective, the speed could download the entire Netflix library in under a second. While this isn't consumer ready tech yet, yet, the milestone highlights the future potential for ultra high speed communications, especially in cloud AI and data heavy industries. This is actually freaking amazing, freaking sweet to see. I can't even believe that this is possible. Growing up in the middle of nowhere with dial up, you know, segueing into DSL, um, waiting for a song to download for hours, just seeing that you can download the entire Netflix library in under a second, absolute insanity. That's all I have for this week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. And until next time, remember to stay nerdy, y'all. Peace out.